Hello everybody and welcome to this follow-up tutorial. Now, I have done some testing prior to actually beginning this tutorial and I have realized that when I type in the command wash and when I pass the interface VLP to a zero, which is my wireless interface, okay, it starts scanning now and it seems to be working without any bigger problems here. However, uh, let me just go ahead and cancel it. It tends to it tends to issue out er errors and it doesn't say much. It just says that it's unable to open the interface that you have specified. And after I've Googled it up a little bit, I have found the, that the problem is a missing file. In order to fix that, you just need to type in MK dear, one of the basic Linux commands, uh, to make a directory. Uh, type in slash Etsy Reaver. Press enter and there you go. Now this command will create this file in this folder. It says cannot create directory because uh, it already exists. I have created it prior to this. But if it gives you any trouble whatsoever, uh, try doing this. Try uh, creating this file. Reaver can be problematic from time to time. And there are forums dedicated to these things, which you can, of course, use. Just type in Reaver help or whatever on the net. They'll, you'll be given like 100 forums where you can go and turn to help. But you can always ask me as well to help you out. No problems. I'll be more than happy to do it. Anyway, just go ahead. That's, a, that's a small fix that you can do if you, ha if you encounter any problems. But if you don't, well, then good for you and good for us all. Uh, type in, just go ahead and back and let's continue and let's start the scanning process itself to see what we need to, what we can actually attack, what services, what access, wireless access points here are vulnerable and what we can actually do. If you take a look, if you take a bit of a closer look, uh, here you will see the DSS ID, which is basically the MAC address of the access point. Here you can see the channel. Uh, RSSI, that's not important for us. Uh, VPS version, that, that, that can be important. And VPS lock, this is what we are looking. This is the most important thing here that we need to pay attention to. If it says no, good for you, uh, you can actually do it. If it says yes, it means that the VPS has been disabled on that particular wireless access point and this attack will is rendered pointless. You can't do anything with it. It, it, won't, it won't yield any results. In fact, you won't be able to try even a single pin. So as long as the answer is no, the wireless access point is vulnerable and you can do and you can perform this sort of attack. No problems. I mean, yeah depending on the router, of course, and depending on how it how well it was configured. But out of the box, usually it's not that good. Anyway, uh, this is the wireless access point that we will be attacking. This is mine. It's called something, which I have set up for our tutorial today. I think that this test router was like 20 bucks, something like that. They're pretty cheap these days. Uh, it's not the best one, definitely, but it will serve a purpose for our learning sessions today. Let's just go ahead and cancel this. There is a, there is one more thing which we need to be certain of. Uh, here we can see which, uh, which access points are vulnerable. But other than that, we need to verify the signal strength. So hero dump dash n, hero dump dash ng, uh, VLP to us zero. Go ahead and start. Excellent. So I have used this command in the previous tutorials and here you can see the power output. So as long as it's, well, minus, minus 80 is not a good thing. It's definitely not a good thing for Reaver. Uh, you want to have, let me just stop it here because I have the network that I want. You see something is minus 43 and then you, we, I have this one, which is minus 53. These are all well, good ranges. They're relatively good. They have relatively good signal strength. And somehow, somehow, even though my router is literally right next to my computer, it's minus 43, which is not as good. And I have these minus 80, who's probably my neighbors or something like that. Anyway, I'm not going to touch them. I'm not going to mess with them. I'm just going to go ahead and focus on this one, which is mine. But it does, it does need to be at least minus 60, at least below minus 60. 
so minus 55, minus 40, something of a kind, uh, you will be able to actually perform it in minus 75 and minus 80. I have heard of these cases, but it is not easy. I get breaks in the connection, get problems, errors, etc. Not the best of things to do. You, if you want to crack it, you want to get close to it or something like that, you don't need to stay there for the whole irritation of the attack primarily because uh, usually these sort of attacks you can start and then continue at a later time from where you're left off. No problem. Reaver, save these sort of uh, information for you and you, can, you are able to reuse it or to restart it from where you left it off previously. Now I'm going to employ Reaver. So type in Reaver dash a uh, for our mac address so what we need is ups for something there we go uh second one let's go ahead and paste it and type in the interface for elp to us zero oops sorry my bad it's not dash a i want to pass the mac address and the interface should go first let's see if it's going to work like this Yep, it's going to work. You don't need to use this specific order or restore from the previous session. No, but I do want to do this. Double verbose output here. Always a good idea to do. Anyway, press enter. Uh, no, I do not wish to restore it. Just continue, go ahead and continue and see what happens. Okay, so you see what it's doing here. It says switching to channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. We don't want to do that. Let's just go ahead and cancel it. I want to save it a lot of time and let's see what uh, what something, which channel am I using? I am using channel six for something. That's just the frequency on which my wireless access point functions. So let's just go ahead and type in dash C six. Will it work like this? Switching to channel six immediately. Yes, it will. Uh, no, I do not wish to continue from before. Excellent. So it says here trying this pin and it just keeps on going. It's going to tell me at a certain point of time what percentage of the task is done, but usually you can do this within a day. I mean, uh, provided, of course, that you don't get locked out or something like that. And the amount of the amount of tries you can actually do before getting completely locked out. So you see here is one pin. And where's the other one? Here's the uh, here's yet another pin, and here's a third pin, and so on and so forth. Of course, we have all seen the pin that I have used at the very beginning, uh, to, that the router has generated automatically. I have not saved that I have actually just used the one that's already there, but that's completely irrelevant, because pins vary from a router to a router. And this is going to take a while. You see, it, it says 0.05% complete and it gives you when it was done. And if you remember at the beginning, it actually asked me, do I wish to continue from the last time I started doing this? That's the beauty of it. You can go for it, uh, start cracking it somewhere. And let's say you're passing by a certain place. You can sit at a bench for an hour or something like that. Have this, have this run for you. I'll leave it, I mean leave. Tomorrow again, pass by the same bench, sit on it, leave it for an hour, half an hour, something like that. And there you go. Eventually, you will be able to crack it, no problems. Of course, if somebody's reviewing the router logs, which is rarely done for, for routers where pin authentication is actually enabled, then they will see that somebody's trying to do something and they might decide to actually close down pin authentication altogether. However, other than that, there isn't really much that they can do. Even if they set specific MAC addresses of the computers within the network, you will still be able to see those MAC addresses. And as I showed in the previous tutorial, you will be uh, you will be prompted to you will be able to change your MAC address to match the corresponding MAC addresses which are allowed to pass. And there we go. After only 0.05 percent complete, it says warning detected AP rate limiting waiting 60 seconds before rechecking which means that the router is now in the lockdown and you can't actually do anything there are the good thing about the not a bad thing to do would be to actually see the router see the router's mac address and then try to figure out which router it is and then search on the net to see 
uh, what what the AP rate AP rate limiting is, and then you can time your reverb pin attempts in between so that the router doesn't get locked. I will continue with this in the follow up tutorial, but for the time being. I am locked out and in the next tutorial we will be doing some workarounds around this lockout and see how we can actually bypass it because this is one of the most common problems that people encounter. It's not the installation because it's relatively simple. The usage is also relatively simple. The setup is not a big big deal or big problem. There's plenty of help on the net. But here it says detect AP rate limiting waiting 60 seconds before rechecking. That is the, one of the most hated lines as far as the uh, Reaver world is concerned. In any case, I bid you farewell and I really hope to see you in the follow-up tutorial where we will attempt to bypass this problem.